Anything you want to say to me, Mr. Stemple? Yes, Your Honor. Welcome to Miss Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the most tragic moments over 25 seasons in Judge Judith Scheinlin's legendary TV courtroom. The question is, is this his dog? Number 10. Suing her parents for ruined credit. The plaintiff put her parents' electricity in her name while she lived with them but they never paid her back and it tanked her credit score. I'm Subsequently, not she closed the account. Right. She closed the account. It was reopened. How? She, th I was talking to her and she felt bad for me and she says, Mom, I don't want you to not have electricity. Defendants Alan Evans and Jacqueline Whitmore don't seem completely able to understand or answer the judge's questions. So why didn't you notify Social Security Disability that your check should stop? She was my payee. Listen to me. That's not my question to you. Well, it might be because of guilt or because they're genuinely having trouble, but it seems like a difficult and depressing situation. It's hard not to feel bad for the daughter who's having to take her own parents to court because they have no desire or the wherewithal to do right by her. We understand each other, Congress. <laughs> <laughs> Number nine, who's responsible for the injury at daycare? It's every young parent's deepest fear. If you can't trust the people hired to take care of your kids, who can you trust? This was not the first time you were taking the children to her daycare, is that correct? That's correct. Tiffany Walker and her husband dropped her children off at Heather Shearer's daycare. That night, their child had a broken leg and had to undergo surgery. So the swing is in the living room. Correct. And the baby was okay when she dropped the baby off. Yes, ma'am. Shearer blames the plaintiff's other child for injuring the child, which is a bold defense as they were both in her care at the time. Her demeanor is almost disturbingly flat. Whether it's guilt or annoyance, she's completely checked out, which doesn't bode well for a child care provider. So I assume from this answer that, according to you, it's the nine-year-old's fault. I don't know that it happened in my care. The fact is that no one, neither the child nor the parents, should have gone through this. Judgment for the plaintiff in the amount of $5,000, that will cover $4,000 of your medical bills plus some. Number eight. Who should pay for man's gravestone? Neva Miller sues her deceased grandson's fiance, Shelby Morrison, so she will pay for the man's headstone, even though Morrison has already paid for the funeral. And you're suing her now for $2,000 because you want her to pay for a headstone. Yes, ma'am. But Morrison is so over this heartless family's antics, she's not even pursuing the remainder of her deceased fiance's life insurance policy because they've made life so difficult for her. And I don't want the money. It's never been about the money for me in the first place. Despite saying the defendant didn't provide a headstone, the defendant has proof that she did. And it comes out at that point that the grandmother just hadn't been to the cemetery since. So it would be fair to say that you just want the money back. Whatever no, money I'm, is left over. I'm, While it's terrible to lose a grandchild, it's clear Miller is being petty for the sake of being petty. For her, it was all about the money. Oh, um, dokie. We're done here. Thank you very much. Case is dismissed. Pardon. Number seven. Your Honor, that child is lying. You'd think that your dog biting a child might be a wake-up call to do something to prevent future incidents. And while I passed her, the dog went around and behind her and bit me on the leg. But for some people, it's easier to blame children for their own negligence. That was the case with these defendants. One was walking their dog when it bit the plaintiff's offspring. As the judge is talking to the sweet kid, the dog owner can't help but call him a liar. I'm sorry, your honor, that is false. Just a second, don't interrupt. Okay. However, the judge isn't so sure she has any right to call someone dishonest, as she has plenty of holes in her story. Why would you direct or suggest that Sammy go around the dog. I directed him I, by standing there. I didn't. When her husband steps in and says the dog actually had reason to bite the boy, it becomes apparent just how low these two will stoop to avoid responsibility. So far, your wife hasn't given me a reason. Uh -huh. She's given two different stories, but not one reason. Number six, doing a sister dirty. Siblings can have their fights, but most don't end up in court. Corey Koltoff sues her older sister for repayment on dental work she paid for. Did you do that with a particular dentist or with a dental practice? It was at the care credit, so the dentist that she went to accepted care credit. Defendant Carissa Koltoff attests she only needed the dental work because Corey had punched her in the jaw a couple years before. And now we're even because she wanted to do this for me for punching me in the jaw and for 
dislodging my teeth, that's your defense, right? Yes. Really? Really. But the absolute worst part is that Carissa stopped paying because her sister, who remember is the one suing, is currently dating the father of Carissa's children. <laughs> oh, shh. I don't need that. Despite being legally right, the plaintiff is morally wrong. No one was on her side after that. Even the judge, who normally tries to stay out of the drama, can't help but weigh in. I would say she's probably right in that regard, but yeah. she still has to pay for her own dental work. Number five, reuniting a dog with its owner. Judge Judy fans will never forget how this one turned out. Although it ends happily, with Judge Judy playing King Solomon in a case about a lost dog, the defendant's actions in this case are pretty pathetic. The defendant purchased a dog from a woman on the street. Yes. She says she bought a dog from a woman on the street. However, the plaintiff contends the dog is actually his and has been missing for months. She settles it fairly. Put the dog down. Don't, Put the don't, dog don't. down. She tells the defendant's daughter to let the dog down, and he immediately runs to the plaintiff, his old owner, even as her mother tells her not to. The fact that she knows it's the plaintiff's dog and is trying desperately to keep it in spite of that is some truly disgusting behavior. That's all. Take the dog home. Number four, grieving mother sued. Grief makes everything messy. In this case, funeral home owner Monty Roberts offered to bury Cheryl Torres' son for free. I explained to her that our funeral home never turns anybody away. I offered her a variety of different options, including free. However, she declined, opting for a grant that would pay for the full service she felt was proper. Once she did not receive that grant, she was on the hook for the full cost and decided not to pay the funeral home. How does your signature there, Ms. Torres, when it says buyer? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you understand you have a binding contract with him to pay for the funeral service. Mm -hmm. You understand that? Yes. Due to the tremendous pain surrounding the loss of her son, Torres is clearly on the edge of tears the entire time. The contract is very, very simple. It says that you are purchasing this. The judge gets no pleasure from ruling against her, and Roberts looks like he'd rather be anywhere else than suing a mother who's lost her child. There are no winners here. Number three, doused with boiling water. Things in this roommate dispute were almost too bizarre to be true. Do you have a police report? Yes, I do. I'd like to take a look at her. Kylie Jones claims the defendant, ex-roommate Octavia Camby, poured boiling water on her while she slept, and that the police didn't arrest her attacker because he was a, quote, Fugazi officer. What does that mean? That means he's fake. With a little more digging, it becomes clear that Jones was incredibly high on PCP when the officers responded, and was too incoherent to advocate for herself at the scene as a result. Judge Judy offers some words of wisdom, but in that special way, only she can. What she did was terrible. Yeah. What she did was terrible. Yeah. They didn't take you seriously. Yeah. Jones is left in tears by the end. She wins her case, but it's apparent she was her own worst enemy. Number two, a man in desperate need of help. The plaintiff in this uncomfortable case gave the defendant money for a work-related substance use test and never paid her back. Did you ask her for money for a drug test? Yes. She alleges he spent the money on illicit substances instead. Judge Judy can be a hard nut to crack, but it's clear the defendant can't even stand in place long enough for her to hear the case. That's not completely true. Basically, I did, um, I... As he shudders and stumbles over his words at the lectern, the defendant can barely string a sentence together, and it's pretty clear he's going through withdrawal symptoms. Rather than submit him to any more questioning, she realizes he needs help and offers to assist him. To be 31 years old, if you want to be 32 years old, you better get yourself some help. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Suing a Grieving Mother for Car Damages the circumstances of this case are uniquely harrowing. Wendy Moore gave her teenage son permission to drive her car, and he gave the keys to his young friend, who was also too young to drive. She was killed in the accident. Is your daughter killed instantly in the car? Yes, ma'am. Would you believe it's the irresponsible woman who gave her son the keys that's suing the dead girl's mother for damages? Well, that's exactly the kind of barrel scraping, repugnant behavior on display in this infamous case. Think carefully what you just said. 
that I never gave her permission to drive the car. No, that's not what you just said. You said I never gave him permission to drive off the property. While the grieving mother can barely keep herself composed in court, the unfeeling plaintiff and her son are not smart enough to be grateful he made it out alive. They just want money. Needless to say, the judge is unsympathetic to their problem. I would turn to her and I would say to her, I can't tell you how terrible I feel that in my home, in my car, with the keys that I leave in the car, your daughter met such an early death. Which one of these cases shocked you the most? Leave us a comment below. Was what kind her? of goodbye don't you understand? There are only so many ways I can say goodbye. <laughs>